This is One on One. Colin McCann is the author of a fascinating book called uh, Transatlantic. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. The uh, premise of this book is uh, one that I have a feeling if you didn't get into, no one else would. Um, Transatlantic, three time periods that right. you look at here. People who um, make the connection, right? Spectacular transatlantic journeys, really. One being Alcock and Brown, who took the first transatlantic flight in 1919, basically in a boat of air with linen wings and wooden, wooden struts and two Rolls-Royce engines. They were the first ones to cross the Atlantic. Right. Frederick Douglass, 1845. 27 another, years of age? 27 years of age, still a slave. <laughs> and he goes across to Ireland to go on a, on a lecture tour. It's another spectacular transatlantic journey, and then a series of transatlantic journeys by one of the great peacemakers of our time, uh, Senator George Mitchell, who we all know is still uh, you know, negotiating peace for us in all sorts of ways. Why'd you get into this? And what is the fascination? By the way, where did you grow up? I grew up in Dublin. Um, and I think one writes towards uh, one's obsessions. And I was uh, sort of obsessed by the, this idea of, um, of Douglas. I thought, this is, a, this is a fantastic story. So a black slave goes to Ireland and, and the famine unfolds at his feet, the Irish famine, which later fed generations of Americans, there's so many Americans out there whose ancestors came from those five years of terrible famine. He was there at the time. He was witness to those moments. And he's one of the great legislators uh, of our times. I thought that was a great story, but I wanted to bring it all the way up to the present day. Because when Obama went to Ireland in 2011, who did he mention? But Frederick Douglass. And, uh, and Obama was, uh, really influenced by, by, by Douglas too. But Douglas, I think, was so important to this country, almost um, as important as to the shape of this country as Lincoln. And also there, therefore, sort of important to the shape um, of Ireland and Irish history as well. The connection, though. The connection between Ireland and... It's like every good story. The connection between these three stories, it's all about women. Whoa. So, yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's a whole uh, so in the in the novel even Frederick Douglass. Oh yeah, no. Well, there's a, I, I make up four generations um, of women and tell their. These stories. are fictional women, though. These are fictional women. Go ahead. So I have I have um, non-fiction characters and then I have fictional characters and I braid them together. It's like a tapestry. So the fiction is the is the thread that weaves together the history and the non-fiction and basically trying to say that all of our lives are important. There's no such thing as an anonymous life. Even the anonymous lives feed the big history of our times. But Colin, when you're combining non-fiction, the names of these real people, historical right. figures, with fiction, yes. complicated, confusing? Com complicated, confusing. I have to hold all these sort of contradictory ideas at, at the same time. But the way I see it is, how do we look at history? You know, If you want to know about um, the Great Depression in the United States, what do you go back to? We go, uh, certainly, I go back to The Grapes of Wrath. I right. go back to a fictional character, Tom Joad. Fiction legislates so much of our history. Set in time. Fiction Absolutely. set in time. Exactly, set in, in that time. So I'm taking all these different times and bringing them all together in a, in a sort of stew uh, that becomes an Irish stew and, and, and an American stew. But it's really uh, essentially about the, uh, you know, the landscape of the, of the human, human impulse. This is not your first novel. This is number one, two, three, six, <laughs> and so so book book number eight. I wrote a book called um, "Let the Great World Spin," which was set in New York about uh, Philippe Petit's tightrope walk across the World Trade Center towers in 1974. Um, a... Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Set the context again. Well, P Philippe Petit in 1974 uh, walked a quarter of a mile in the sky between the two World Trade. I remember Center seeing towers. that video. And to me, this act of creation was in perfect opposition to the spectacular act of destruction that happens in um, 2001. And, and when I began to look at the years, uh, 1974, we had the soldiers coming home from Vietnam. We had issues of liberation theology. We had issues of art. The internet was being born. You could almost map that over onto 2001 and have one be an allegory for, for, for the other. So Philippe Petit's tightrope walk, to me, becomes an allegory for, not for the towers coming down, but for recovery and grace, because I believe in recovery. I believe in grace. I believe in the fact that, 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 that we can heal. I'm sort of one of those uh, 
unrepentant. You're optimist. an optimist. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Given everything you've seen. Yes. Still an optimist. I've seen a lot. I took a bicycle across this country when I was in my early 20s. I've gone to a lot of different places. And I do believe that I'm able to get as dark as any cynic and I can get down and dirty with the, with, with, with the cynic. But the cynic bores me. I think the cynics are lazy. I think they're sentimental. They live in the cloud of their own How, Excuse me, interrupting. A cynic, sentimental. Yeah. That's, I know. Sounds like an oxymoron. That's to turning the tables. The cynics like to say that, that that the optimists are sentimental about human nature, but to me, the cynic is, is is one who lives in these very defined borders of his or her own pessimism, and it's completely uninteresting to me. What's really much more interesting to me is if you're, if you're able to deal with them and then just walk away from them and be much more. I think optimists are much more muscular, much stronger. Than, than, than the cynics are. It's particularly interesting for me to hear you talk like that because there is a, uh, either a, a perception, misconception, if you choose to look at it that way, that there uh, are some folks who come from the part of the world that you have come from that choose to look at the world not in that fashion. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the, 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 the Irish and our songs and our stories. Yeah, and well, our... I heard a few of them. And my <laughs> wife is a good part Irish. Well, all our love songs I'm are... not saying she's <laughs> a natural pessimist, but I know right. some of her relatives. So, I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for that. But yeah. you, you, you know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about. All our, all our love songs are deeply unhappy, and all our war songs are really raucous and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and uproarious. So where did you come from? I don't know, but I do believe that it, that 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 um, I'm interested in bridging this um, this uh, notion between Ireland and America, between this sort of darkness and and this light, between this optimism um, and this um, you know this uh, reality that exists in in, in in Europe. This is more of a European uh, sensibility, and um, and I like the idea that we can get out. I do believe. That that there is a value. Um, I know you work with uh, you work with kids and stuff. You work with, with, yeah. with, with charities. I do the same too. I work with a charity called Narrative. I was going to ask you about Narrative Four. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, we bring kids from all over the world, from Belfast, from the south side of Chicago, from Haiti, from New Orleans, and um, they come together not just to tell each other stories, but to literally uh, live in one another's shoes for a while and 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 actually inhabit each other's lives. Mm. For instance. For instance, I will have a kid from Chicago get together with, say, a kid from Newtown, Connecticut, because we're working with yeah. kids from Newtown, Connecticut, and they will get together. Given the horrific events from Newtown. Exactly, from, from, from last year. And, and, and they, will, um, they will exchange one another's stories. And then I will, I will get up and I'll say, if you, you and I were talking, I'll say, hi, my name is Steve. And when I was 12 years old, this happened to me. And you'd say, hi, my name is Colm. And when I was 14 years old and you know, I was in Dublin, um, th this thing happened to me. Big, Stories of great, uh, uh, great, great humor. They can be stories of great sadness. They can, but what happens is that they uh, become one another. The greatest act of empathy is the ability to become somebody else, um, and I think that's what we've lost a lot of um, uh, these days. And and I think it's really powerful for kids. I'm glad you uh, chose to be an optimist. Thank you. You mind if I plug your book again? Oh please. Speaking of optimist, please, please. Being an optimist. <laughs> Transatlantic, the author is Colin McCann, and uh, we appreciate you welcome, coming into our world of public television. We welcome you, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. And I appreciate you, too. Thank you so much. Okay, keep doing what you're doing, okay? Cheers. Also taking care of those kids in Narrative 4. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Cone Resnick, and by PSE&G. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by Celgene.